good evening uh, sir uh, with your permission sir uh, sir i'm starting the yes, yes uh, on behalf of ips telangana state branch uh, office peers i welcome uh, all the delegates who have attend, uh, joined to attend this meeting this is the second webinar and uh, uh, before uh, handing over to the <coughs> proceedings to jot sir I, i would like to welcome all the distinguished guests here sir uh, jot sir uh, please uh, welcome jot sir president ips telangana state branch i welcome uh, dr pras sir uh, vice president uh, ips telangana state branch i welcome dr sai krishna editor ips telangana state branch i welcome dr chandrashekar sir senior psychiatrist and i welcome today's uh, chairpersons dr kishan sir and dr umashankar sir and uh, today's speaker dr anand sir now i hand over the proceedings to george reddy sir sir please take over sir thank you bhavan uh, good evening uh, uh, everybody i think uh, at the outset first uh, i thank all the senior members uh, present uh, for today's uh, webinar dr chandrashekar sir dr anand sir dr uh, kishan sir dr mahesh shankar sir dr mayur sir and all the members of ips tsb and all the uh, distinguished uh, members who have joined for today's cmb i think in fact uh, during uh, this tenure of uh, 22 23 this we started this uh, monthly uh, ips tsb webinar and uh, we have uh, uh, sponsor uh, helping us to organize this event and at the outset uh, definitely i thank all of you uh, i think uh, the good number uh, on a sunday uh, evening and uh, we apologize because there was a rescheduling of the program the same program which was supposed to be held on uh, in the month of july due to unexpected uh, uh, work from our speaker dr anand sir we postponed but still uh, thank you everybody uh, without taking much time um, i will hand over the uh, proceeding to our moderator today uh, dr uh, sai krishna and before that i i should uh, thank dr minhas dr vishal pawan and uh, sai and uh, narayan rao and all the ec members uh, for uh, giving uh, adequate um, support for organizing this program uh, dr sai needs uh, dr sai krishna needs no introduction but uh, can you and sai uh, it, it is uh, mbbs from uh, Uh, Pratima Institute of Medical Sciences, Karim Nagar. Later, he did his MD from uh, Kamneni uh, Institute of Medical Sciences at Narket Pali, and he is trained uh, in medical education training from Jipmer uh, Pondicherry in the year 2012. Current position is the professor of psychiatry at uh, Pratima Institute, Karim Nagar, and is the honorary editor uh, for the second consecutive term of the Telangana Journal of Psychiatry, and he is doing a wonderful job and. Uh, He is meticulous uh, and uh, the person behind today's uh, program, and his areas of interest are uh, addiction psychiatry and sexual medicine. Yeah, a wonderful uh, uh, person, uh, Dr. Sai, and I think uh, without him we cannot imagine many of our programs. Uh, he is very active at the state level, the zonal level, and even at the national level. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sai. Uh, I request you to take our side. thank you sir good evening to all seniors colleagues and uh, post graduates we welcome you all to today's cme program today the topic evolution of research question it had started from dr george reddy sir's presidential address where sir had said that we are planning to conduct series of webinars discussions on journal so i had requested ec and george sir to permit first there should be a discussion on what is research and uh, the idea of research should be inculcated in young researchers and post graduates so the idea had started like that so we thought that dr anand sir who is a senior most member of ips tsb 
uh, who is very active in uh, academics and research. So first lecture should be started with Anand sir. So I thought my, my mentors, Dr. Kishan sir and Uma Shankar sir should be the chairpersons during the first session. And all the EC members, president, vice president, secretary and treasurer have accepted for my request. And that's how the program had started. And uh, Dr. Raghuram Reddy sir had sent a brief message regarding today's uh, session. Dr. D.B. Anand, the distinguished speaker on evolution of research question has experience of PG teaching in psychiatry for more than 30 years. He's a known clinician with exceptional knowledge in research statistics, card the future and career of many postgraduates over a lot of period. He had delivered many presentations in psychiatry status and many fora. Sir is very eager to join today's presentation and he had wished his uh, best wishes. And there are a lot of messages from seniors, Dr. Chandrasekhar sir, Dr. Kishan sir, Raj Shekhar sir, Minat sir, Pavan sir, Sri Lakshmi madam. We are all uh, eagerly waiting for uh, today's seminar. Before wasting time, I am trying to introduce today's uh, chairpersons. First, I'll introduce uh, Dr. Kishan sir, who is my mentor. Sir is professor and HOD Department of Psychiatry, Pratima Institute of Medical Sciences, Karim Nagar. Sir had done his MD from Usmania Medical College, Hyderabad. Sir is, was president of South Zone IPS from 2019 to 2020. President AP State Branch 2014 to 2015. Presently serving as Vice President IMA Telangana Branch from 2021. Sir is also serving as Co-Convener Membership Sum Committee IPS 2021. Sir is having multiple publications in Indexed Journal. He had guided 17 theses and uh, 17 uh, MD students had passed under Sir's tenure. Sir is executive member of WPA section on religion, spirituality and mental health. Sir is currently editor Telangana Journal of IMA and he is a chairperson of task force on spirituality and mental health, IPS. Sir is also president of IMH Hyderabad Alumni Association. We welcome you, Sir. Next, I will introduce. Next, I will introduce our second chairperson, Dr. Uma Shankar sir. Uma Shankar sir needs no introduction. Sir is professor and HOD, Gandhi Medical College. Sir is superintendent, Institute of Mental Health, Eragada, Hyderabad. Sir had an MBBS from Kakte Medical College, Varangal. He is MD from Usmania Medical College, Hyderabad. Sir is currently CEO, State Mental Health Authority, Telangana State. Now I hand over the proceedings to today's chairpersons, Dr. Kishan sir and Uma Shankar sir. Over to Kishan, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Sai, and uh, for that, thanks. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to Telangana State Branch under leadership of, leadership of Dr. George Reddy. Uh, initiated wonderful program is having big agenda of uh, active work for the next year. We are going to see the show of Dr. George Reddy, his activities. And thank you very much, IPS TSB, for giving the opportunity for the chairing. My teacher, Dr. Anand Sir Session. And his teacher is guide to my thesis, uh, along with Dr. Raghuram Reddy. And the, most of the participants are students of Dr. Anand. And uh, today's participants, how they, are, they keenly uh, want to listen to Dr. Anand. So before giving uh, to Uma Shankar, uh, to talk, uh, I want to tell a few words about because Chandrasekhar sir is there and so many other seniors also there. In the uh, the research, we are predicting that now during my period, there are only two MD seats, myself and Kesharao, mm -hmm. uh, two MD students and two, three, uh, four DPMs out of that, two M DPMs should vacant. But now we are getting 90 MD, 100 MD students in uh, uh, MD psychiatry in, Telang uh, in Telangana state itself. So we at least 10% of 10 are should go to the research because we have in a lot of people are coming from well of families. So research and academicians should uh, be developed. That is a uh, thinking going on in uh, some of the leaders of IPS in South Zone. And uh, that is that is why the research capacity building committee started in South Zone, and uh, it is unlimited budget. Uh, it last three four years. The Shaji and other senior leaders of South Zone, 
and Dakshin Shekhar and Dakashok Reddy, all these persons are helped to establish. And that's wonderfully, they had started second training program of RCBC, that is research training and uh, uh, Lots of A lot of Hustian professors, young psychiatrists are participating in that. I participated every class, almost uh, in the first uh, session and second session is going on. So now one more area is funding agencies. Uh, Aish department uh, and other uh, even drug uh, companies are giving funding uh, funding areas. Now that South Zone started the funding, uh, we even have IPS association also starting funding. Agencies. So in uh, in support of this, IPS South Zone started 10 lakhs fund, that is a program research fund started in South Zone to support the RCBC because they got, uh, we discussed with Ashok how to continuous funding for that. And alumni association also started 5 lakhs fund for alumni, uh, IMH alumni teachers fund for research, that is with 5 lakhs fund. And Telangana State Bank is seriously thinking about RCBC in at the state level and South Zone is guiding all states to start RCBC committee, that is research capacity building com committees at, the, at this level. And one more point we observed, a lot of the editors, they, because in during AP, we completed 25th year celebration that, uh, 10 years back uh, of our journal, AP journal. A lot of editors, two, three editors have seen, they are not allowed to talk in our inaugural function and, edit, uh, and the value dictatory functions. One or two editors shared with me, so there should be respect should be increased to the editors of journals and uh, as especially for researchers and uh, in this, this should be encouraged by our association that is aims it is there in our aims and objectives i think this is a best starting by tangana state branch is thinking seriously at least 10 lakhs fund should be uh, allotted that i think uh, uh, jajredi is thinking and uh, is easy is thinking at least we are having 50 lakhs, 10 lakhs fund interest should go to as a fund for the young research for the best protocol that like that. Anansar is a great resource person and uh, we need a lot of Anansars in next generation and uh, other researchers. In few, uh, these are the two few ideas from my side. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, with this first, I want to hand out to Uma Shankar for uh, his comments and uh, uh, to go ahead. Good evening, all of you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, all of you. Uh, thank you, the IPS GSB, giving this opportunity for uh, chairing this session. Is a Dr. Arnold sir is a is a teacher for many teachers here. I think he's I think he's a very great person. Uh, he's a, uh, he did his MBBS from Gandhi Medical College. And he uh, did his uh, DNP in psychiatry and DPM in enhance. He uh, did a certificate course in research methodology also. He was uh, retired from the Institute of Mental Health as a professor of psychiatry. And the right, right present right now is working as a professor of psychiatry in Mallaradi Institute of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. And he was uh, uh, experienced, worked as a senior resident in psychiatry at JITMA, Pondicherry. As a research associate in neuropsychology unit at Nimhans Bangalore, and uh, in the as a, in the project he worked as a, he is awardee of the Jairam Award in the South Zone Conference for the year 1999, and he had a publications 53. I think he was a um, pub, uh, I think more than that. I think so. He was uh, so, so he, gave, he was guide for so many people. He was uh, co guide for also so many people that time. So whenever we get any opportunity for doing any research, the Anasar name used to come to us. So we used to go and uh, meet him. He is very kind enough to help us. Many students, they help. And uh, because of him, uh, we know some um, area of research, how to do the research, how we plan the research, some of the things we could learn because of him. Um, I think uh, today, it is a evaluation of research, a research question is a good topic. 
I informed many our postgraduate also because we difficult to get a, a speaker like this. So we have a fortunate today. We have a Dr. Anand sir, um, and also I feel very proud and uh, privileged uh, to my teacher as a chairperson. Thank you, sir. And uh, I will uh, once again I thank the organizers giving the opportunity. I request the Anand sir, please. Uh, proceed your presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kishan, sir, and Umashankar, sir. Now over to Anand, sir. So thank you, everybody, for the nice words. Nice to see all the people again on the Zoom and uh, uh, the senior uh, people who have been my superintendent and guide at IMH, Dr. Raghuram Ritigaru, and other names I'm not able to see, but uh, uh, thank you all for uh, asking me to present uh, on a topic uh, for starting this uh, particular uh, uh, on a theme of uh, research uh, methodology, which uh, Dr. Sai has been uh, doing wonderful work, especially for the journal and uh, and so much of uh, there's a lot of things which he has to do for uh, keeping up the journal. And we wish all the best because the journal is uh, uh, the only uh, way in which we can communicate our thoughts and ideas and our work to the world. So uh, we once you get all the uh, the, the required uh, you know, indexes, which of course is trying a, a lot. Uh, definitely, a lot of quality uh, articles will definitely come and it will become one of the uh, leading uh, journals. So I thank uh, the organizers for actually, I uh, want to show this, for uh, giving me this. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. The plaque and also the shawl. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I think I will uh, start with the uh, topic. Um, let me share my screen. So I hope I am uh, audible and also Visible? Is there any problem? I'll just try. Oh, sir. You are the... audible and visible, sir. Thank you, thank you. Only thing Make it is... as full screen, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to do that. Just a minute. Uh, I meanwhile, sir, can start talking. Yes, sir, yes. Yeah. In the down, sir, where the slideshow is there, no, sir, here, I think so. Hmm. Where the voice is there, we can enlarge it, sir. Okay. Sir, on the right side, just to, uh, sir, here, 62%, sir. 
bottom beside 62 percent you can uh, just to click it sir beside 62 percent you can click left side ah, to yes. left side, left, side, left, side, side, left, side left side to 62 percent <laughs> The only thing I am not able to uh, sir, find left. it is slide, slide show. No, sir, left side, sir. Yeah. Just to beside 64 percentage there, just to beside you can click it, sir. The right side, yep. sir. Right side. Right side. Right, right, side. right, right side. bottom. Just to right before mine. This is a minus, sir. Not plus side, minus side you can. Sir, no, no, sir. No. no, sir. No, sir. This is uh, this is uh, this side, sir. Not uh, opposite side. Sir. No, not. Sir, there are four symbols uh, on the left side of uh, one twenty percent, sir. Uh, out of which Just four? Just beside one twenty, you can click it, sir. Yes, sir. Left side, sir. Left side where? Beside oh, one twenty. Just now you click it, sir. Beside one twenty, sir. I like this is plus, it is a minus is there. No? This side minus is there, no, sir. No, don't don't say left. It is to the right, sir. To your right side, sir. Right. Right side plus is there. Just this. Yes. No, 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 not that same, one, sir. Same it, continuation minus is there, sir. To the minus, minus. Mundo 64 percent on this. 64 percent, no, sir. 64 percent paka na onna symbol. Sir. Screen on screen mo mundo sir. Screen logo as no kani. Yes, sir. Yes. The right lower and low couple of guns, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's okay, sir. Okay. It's fine, sir. Right. I'm audible and visible, I think. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. I'm very sorry for the no initial pitch. Okay. After a long time, I'm using it on the Zoom. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, Anand, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, yeah. Please, all of you mute yourself except Anand, sir, please. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the to the uh, topic which I have chosen, I thought was uh, important uh, regarding the evaluation of a research question. Now, uh, what I'm trying to see is that how research questions have evolved, uh, how the researchers have tried to evolve the questions and how some of these topics are uh, quite important these days and how it can uh, how we can learn from the researchers who have tried to evolve the question what i mean to say it need not be the same topic but it is the theme in which uh, they have tried to evolve and uh, how did they do it so this can pave a, you know a way for us for the researchers to go ahead in their research. Uh, these are some of the things which I thought were important uh, in guiding some of the uh, theses uh, at IMH and other places. So this is what I am trying to present is the evolution of a research question. So let us straight away jump to this particular uh, <coughs> sutra in uh, Sutta in Rigveda. Uh, which is uh, in the uh, 10th mandala, 129 to actually, there are seven um, suptas like this. Now, what is the importance of this? That the importance is that there is uh, a type of what is called as uh, inquiry into the cosmology, which has been, as you know, that Rigveda is one of the oldest uh, texts which are available to the mankind. So you can actually, the I'm not going to read the slokam, but you can see the meaning there. What it means is that it is about the cosmology. They have not concluded anything here. You can see that, that then even nothingness was not, nor existence, there was no air then, nor the heavens beyond it. So it's a, it's an open question. So He's trying to ask what covered it, where was it, in whose keeping was there 
the cosmic fluid. So what it means to say is that it is a skeptical inquiry into the cosmos. So the main thing is that our ancestors, the sages then had an open mind on examining a lot of things. One of these examples is a cosmology. So that the spirit which we need to uh, inculcate in us, that is a research spirit. So formally defining research is a type of a planned activity. It leads to generation of information that will help in answering a specific question. So it generates a lot of information and it can answer specific questions as you can see here. Questions will never subside. One question is solved, another question will arise. So these are the questions which mankind is faced with and they need to get prepared for the newer questions and try to answer them. So the objectives of my presentation is how do we consume, conceive an issue and conceptualize a research question and writing a title and objective. So let me start with this particular slide. You can see that there are three things which are essential for any research question. That is an idea, literature survey and observation. So I'll try to give certain real life uh, stories and examples for this uh, type of idea, literature, survey and observation. Of course, these days, since we have uh, the media and all that, there are uh, conferences and there are uh, definitely publications and also comments and controversies. So all these things will generate ideas and then people will lead, go into uh, for the literature survey so and then observe and then conclude so let me start with uh, one of the uh, famous uh, study from india only about observation now i do not know how many of you have heard of one dr bhavaskar inspiration for research now Dr. Bhavaskar is uh, a physician from Maharashtra. Now, what has he done is that after his MBBS, he was posted to a, a PhD in Ma Maharashtra, a Konkan region. Now, what he found out were the symptoms following the scorpion sting. Scorpion sting produces hypertension tachycardia, pulmonary edema, and shock. That is autonomic storm. And he found out that the fatality rate is as high as 30%. And people die because of acute pulmonary edema. And this was more common in children. So I do not know how, how many the new uh, generation, whether they have seen scorpions or not in this concrete uh, jungle. But then I do definitely remember seeing at least some scorpions whenever the attic is cleaned. At that time, attics were made of wood and also some wooden boxes. Whenever you open them, you could see or some old wood. If you're taking, then you will find that. And at least in the uh, rural regions, these scorpion stings are quite common. Now, people think that an adult may still not have so much of effect, but children definitely do have effect. So the fatality rate was quite high. And also these, uh, whenever children are bitten by this, the people there used to think that now the person is going to die and never take them to a bigger center. And also the lack of communication and transport that was in uh, 1978. He was working in 1978. Now he is known for starting the use of prazosin which now is, as you know, that uh, is used as anti-hypertensive. Whenever there's a catecholamine uh, rush, uh, like uh, pheochromocytoma, and the fatality rate came down to 1%. So this is basically because of Dr. Bhavaskar's observation. There was no clear documentation about this, uh, the signs and symptoms of scorpion sting, uh, 
before no published good literature on this and of course the mechanism is there because scorpion sting uh, the venom inhibits angiotensin A and results in accumulation of bradykinin which is implicated in the development of pulmonary edema and acute reversible pancreatitis also is a cardiac uh, problem so it can cause uh, acute cardiac failure also and pulmonary edema along with the autonomic hyperstorm and also bradykinin which further enhances noradrenaline released by the presynaptic mechanism which this mechanism was later on described so at that time there was not much of uh, treatment available and uh, many people used to die and he was just an mbbs but then you should understand that at mbbs level still he was able to observe and all these symptoms were recorded by him and at that time some treatment was available but that was not that effective in treating this uh, patients and uh, he actually collected the cases and then he sent it to the indian journal indian medical journal and then they refused because they found that there were a lot of grammatical mistakes in his observation in his writing so without losing heart he sent it to as they say in telugu kodte kumbhasala ani kotali he sent it to the lancet as you know one of the leading journals and how many of us in mbbs at least i did not know there was a journal called as lancet when we were doing mbbs and this person working in a phc has probably heard of lancet and at that time sending an article was not that easy you have to go to the post office and send all these things and then wait because it has to be shipped it will take months and before you get a reply and he got a reply within 8 days and they accepted his paper with some corrections so because they knew the importance of his observations and then he started this patients he again went back and did his md general medicine and came back again to the same place and then started treating these patients with the sodium nitroprusside drip sodium nitroprusside has to be carefully monitored in a icu but then all these patients cannot be taken to an icu so he was monitoring by the bedside of the patients so that they do not go into hypotension and there was remarkable improvement and almost 90% of the patients had improved but you this requires an icu setup but then there was no other go he had to do it there in the field and each patient would take about 4 or 5 hours of observation careful observation each drip have got to be controlled so that was his contribution you can see that this is the publication in the lancet diagnostic cardiac premonitory signs and symptoms of red scorpion sting and then later on he started going to the literature with armed with the md general medicine he was able to understand things better the mechanisms and all that and then his search in the literature and then the recent at that time prozosin was coming into the market so he started using prozosin and then he published this paper in british medical journal efficacy and safety of scorpion antivenom plus prozosin compared to prozosin alone for venomous scorpion sting a randomized open label clinical trial and uh, this has got a clinical trial registration and all that so you see that although uh, there was a lot of gap from 1978 there were some other publications also but then in 2011 this particular paper has received worldwide recognition but our indian government only recently has awarded him padma shri the how recent 2022 so it is not just because of his work on scorpion sting but it was on so many other aspects on um, other uh, snake bites 
and then also uh, on ethics and a lot of other things corruption in the uh, in the field and so many other research contributions so what i mean to say is that this is starting from an observation and how it has led to an idea and a literature survey so all the three as you have seen the cog the wheel you know has got to be um, one wheel turns other uh, wheels also turn so it can't be alone now let us come to this people keep on talking about discoveries by serendipity i heard this word only when i entered uh, psychiatry people used to talk about serendipity it was very difficult to understand what is this word but then later on i was able to understand it is by chance accidentally you discover something but do all the researches happen like that very rare that things happen by chance but as i say the chance favors the prepared mind like for example as we have heard in uh, read long back in our organic chemistry the uh, dream of uh, kekul regarding the benzene ring he was uh, he was dreaming uh, you know uh, serpents one serpents uh, mouth on the tail of biting on the tail of another serpent and like that so that has given him an idea about the benzene structure but then he was thinking about that particular problem it is not that that suddenly something has occurred so suddenly something occurs to us we will not be able to interpret it and probably we will not actually you know give any importance to that because we don't know what exactly it is so people when they are working on a particular problem when they get such sudden ideas that leads to further research exploration of that particular idea so these are some of the um, things which uh, which people say as serendipity like malaria therapy by uh, wagner uh, von jerak medunas chemical convulsive therapy von sockels insulin coma therapy and serlatin bini use of ect as they themselves say that it is not that something we have discovered but we are using a, having a practical use of electrical shock and john cade lithium therapy which i will go into a little more detail later on like likewise chlorpromazine then ipronazid and imipram so let us come to this our famous molecule which we regularly use day in and day out that is john cade and discovery of lithium so lithium has been a drug which is in use for more than 100 years but definitely not for uh, mania and it was used actually for a treatment of gout as uh, lithium urate it was most soluble of the urates so it was uh, used for some other conditions also and it used to happen that uh, whenever uric acid crystals are deposited in the collagen they cause uh, pain but then this disappear gout again they disappear again they appear and uh, lithium bromide was also used as a potent uh, hypnotic at the time there was a hypothesis that like gout that mental illnesses especially the what uh, the maniac depressive illnesses as they used to call would appear and then disappear and then again reappear so probably is it that there is some sort of metabolic uh, intoxication so this what is that metabolite so that was the hypothesis then the hypothesis that mania resulted from an intoxication with a circulating metabolite so john cade wanted to find out what could that be so animal experiments were done so you can see the next thing is experiment that is injected urine from manic patients and also from normal patients into guinea pigs so one was the experimental group another was the um, normal urine so what were the finding the findings were urine from manic patients were more toxic in the guinea pigs than controls so he postulated that the principal toxic substance in the urine was urea 
and that uric acid enhanced its toxicity. So at that time, the prevalent type of uh, thing was that it is probably because of urea and uric acid in the toxicity. So having had this hypothesis, so they wanted to more, once you know that there is some metabolite like this, you want to next go in for a quantitative estimation. So estimate quantitatively the action of uric acid and uric acid is not dissolvable in the body fluid. And they selected a soluble urate that is called as a lithium salt. So lithium urate was used. So as you can see, aqueous solution of 8% urea saturated with the lithium urate was injected. And to the surprise, they found that toxicity was far less than expected. Urate should actually increase the toxicity. So the toxicity is coming down. So the thing was, the finding showed that lithium has done something to this urate. It has decreased the toxicity, which was because of the urate. So lithium ion might be exerting as a protective effect. So they injected, they have taken out the urate molecule and then they started injecting lithium carbonate intraperitoneally and they found that the, there was no toxicity and they found that animals have become very lethargic. This is the reference you can find. It is very interesting to read this uh, discoveries of serendipity in this dialogues of clinical neurosciences. So you see that now they thought that the lithium it can be used and the mechanism of action is that they make people very lethargic. That is what is required in a manic patient. So this drug has been in use for medical illnesses for almost a century. As it was used in many conditions, there was no ethical contradiction for trying in manic patients. And it also confirmed the absence of major side effects with the lithium carbonate and lithium citrate in the doses contemplated by using them on himself. He also used it on himself. And he found out that he was becoming very lethargic. So lassitude and docility in guinea pigs was thought to be the main reason how lithium is acting in many patients. You can see that how things have evolved from a metabolite which is causing increase in toxicity and has changed into the action of a lithium through by causing lassitude and docility. So that is how the, the theory has evolved. But then this was in 1948. But the lithium has not come into use because they found that in higher doses, it is causing toxic effects. So before going to human beings, one has to be very careful. So flame photometry has come into existence in 1960s. And since then, the lithium assessment was possible. And then you can find that what is the uh, safe zone, uh, safe range of the lithium levels. So that is how things have evolved and since 1960s we have regular use of lithium and 50 years of lithium use has been published and then it is found to be one of the safe drugs. So what is research? Research is the systematic as you will see that in the two um, stories which I have narrated, systematic and it is logical which consists of both uh, deduction as well as induction, generalize it also. Empirical, evidence-based, it is reductive and also generalization, both are possible. It is replicable by methodology. Many people try it and then they find the same result. But then the story does not stop there for lithium. With the latest uh, things on uh, the neuro uh, physiology and neurochemistry, you can find that a uh, lot of basic things about uh, you, the lithium uh, has been uh, formulated. The basic things can again be used for applied. Now let us see how. For example, the, it attenuates the phosphodidyl uh, inositol system, inhibition of adenyl cyclase, inhibition of uh, phosphokinase, 
and increases BDNF. So this can be used from the treatment of acute mania and bipolar disorders. And also it has got anti-suicidal properties. You can use a basic for applied and applied for the basic to improve the uh, lithium effects as well as the basic understanding about the lithium mechanism of action. So again, you can see that inhibition of GSK3 beta by some of the latest uh, like the quantum tunneling model and other uh, mechanisms. This has come into recent use. You can find that inhibition of GSK3 beta arrests the development of neurofibrillary tangles in mice. Hence, the application can be in the prevention of Alzheimer's disease or treat Alzheimer's disease. So Drosophila fly, adult onset model of the Alzheimer's disease ameliorates amyloid beta protein. Now, please look at this particular slide, how many of us are familiar? I was not familiar before actually preparing this particular, uh, for this uh, you know, topic, that these are some of the registered clinical trials right now active, currently active with the FDA, clinical trials government. You can see that some of them are lithium for fracture treatment. Lithium as a treatment for, to prevent impairment of cognition in elders. We used to say that lithium impairs cognition, but then because of this uh, GSK-3 beta, it can be also used for impairment of, in prevention of impairment in cognition in elders and in frontotemporal dementia. Efficacy of lithium against chemotherapy induced neutropenia in the breast cancer patients. Effect of regulated add on sodium chloride intake on stabilization of serum lithium concentration in bipolar disorder. So, these are some of the currently active trials, and at least I was not aware. How many of you are aware that lithium addition in water, there is a lot of research which is a lot of water, a lot of flood water has flown through the lithium flood water, but most of us are blissfully unaware about lithium addition in water. At least I was blissfully unaware. Taking into account the association between the suicidality and lithium and in Alzheimer's disease. So people have started thinking, can we add lithium in drinking water? You can see a lot of references I have given. Some of the latest differences also are there. So speculation on a possible role of lithium as a trace element for mental health may be reasonable. This is some of the, this is the summary of the research on addition of uh, lithium in water. Actually, this has appeared in Times of India, but none of us are aware. Uh, two years back, lithium in drinking water may have anti-suicidal effect. So lithium in drinking water, lithium can be found throughout the world, like in brine water, sea water and fresh water it has got less, but brine has got like, for example, in uh, places like mountains and all that, wherever water is there, that particular brine waters will have more lithium. So daily lithium content from, from food is estimated to be two milligrams per day. And with the primary source being the grains and vegetables. And I remember one of the student was asked in the examination long time back in IMH, I remember one of the examiner asked what is the normal level of lithium uh, in the blood? Actually, at that time, the answer was no, zero. Only when lithium is given, no, you estimate lithium. That is the proper, correct answer at that time. But then the candidate has given some level. The examiner was quite furious. Now we can find that, that you can also find lithium in, even in normal blood volume, but it varies and it can be in a minimal um, level. Now, granitic and igneous rocks may have elevated levels of lithium. Igneous rocks, our Deccan Plateau, Deccan Peterbumi is made of basalt, which is igneous rocks. So, you can also find that. 
and <clears throat> problems with conducting baseline testing for lithium is not regularly done in estimation of the contents in of water so lithium in groundwater you can find very few articles on that the first one is from rajasthan and second one you find how many of us know that in suryapet district this has been done and uh, the lithium in water concentration is found to be about 0.14 milligrams per liter so there are lot of not only studies but systematic review and meta analysis are also there published in journal of affective disorder relationship between suicide 308 studies are there it is i was blissfully aware and i thought that there would be a review article at least in the indian journal of psychiatry or indian journal of psychological medicine but no i could not find any probably it's my ignorance somebody can correct me and latest 2020 to february also lithium drinking water as a public policy for suicide public policy you see for suicide prevention this has been the current relevance and considerations so we have blissfully been unaware of some of these things of use of lithium so the youngsters we need to develop what is called the research mindset these are some things which are around us this does not only confine to the textbook of uh, psychiatry but then one needs to search and find out from other fields also for example lithium in water where is it found it is definitely found in mountains and all that where it is more and then it is found also in the vegetables and fruits which we eat so these are some things which actually has nothing to do with the proper psychiatry but definitely to do with the research so the research mindset is we need to sift and synthesize the vast information that is available on the internet and other sources and developing one's own perspective by understanding that information one need to look at the various angles at it and try to develop a proper research and conduct a scientific inquiry in a structured manner so these are things which many of us know that is about the literature review there are a lot of search engines these days i am not going to detail of most of us know about this the medline and embays and uh, cochrane review nice and unpublished research and uh, the way in which you can do the with the boolean operator the and or not and other brackets and all that and then you will get the literature out and then you can also have the hierarchy of evidence the highest being the systematic reviews and meta analysis followed by the controlled uh, randomized trial definite and clinical significant effects and likewise the last one is the case report so even case report definitely would add so somebody you publish a case report unfortunately what is happening is uh, these days many of the standard journals they are not accepting case reports that's an unfortunate thing and there are very few journals with the case reports and uh, most of the foreign journals are now charging ft amounts in pounds and dollars somewhere around 1000 1500 to 3000 dollars for publishing a case report so that is a deterrent for most of us so now let us take the same thing in lithium and how we can develop a research question in this <coughs> sorry <coughs> so can i do something like this lithium in water and suicide prevention in india so before that let us raise some research questions so what can that be so what are the water quality standards in india that is what in my area is lithium in water regularly estimated in india we need to go and search definitely in the uh, we have got google and we have got lot of uh, indian uh, uh, sites are there vegetables and fruits in those areas that would be average intake of lithium and what is the prevalence of suicide in different areas of india and has this lithium in uh, water they are drinking accidentally maybe has it decreased the uh, suicides or not we don't know can we associate suicide prevalence and lithium content in water and food so like that you can think about can we fortify lithium in water for people is suicidal ideas and observe similar to the iodine fortification of salt for high prevention of hypothyroidism so 
these are some of the questions which can be raised and it is for the younger generation to take up these questions and pursue them so whenever we are reading a, a paper the review of studies not just the abstracts many of the times you will find i'll show you some other slides where only reading only the abstracts and making conclusions out of it may not give you the full picture and probably sometimes it will be it could be even misleading so you have to go through the entire things like aims and objectives what are the aims and objectives of the paper what are the population studied exclusion and inclusion criteria tools employed etc statistics employed and study results carefully for any deviations and errors they would have thought of something but then they would have deviated when they talk about the discussion and the conclusions so evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the study and write in your own words about the study that will make us understand what you have you know got out of this particular paper now let us take some examples here studies on cardiovascular system and antidepressants please remember these days that studies are there we show that your antidepressants are working against the cvs system let us see some of these papers i am not going to the study itself but just to give um, for people who are interested can go into that just read the conclusions the underlying thing is current use of antidepressants was associated with lower risk of myocardial infarction in 2016 okay this is one paper so of the different classes of use of ssra showed the lowest risk for ma and therefore confirming the research hypothesis next study this is more scary study this is from 2020 let us see the result the result says that antidepressant use was associated with greater likelihood of having diabetes odds ratio is 1.05 and hypertension odds ratio is again above 1 and hypercholesterolemia again odds ratio is above 1 so what it means is that it's showing that antidepressant medication use is going to increase for people who are having diabetes greater likelihood of having diabetes not only increasing the diabetes level the sugar level but likelihood of having diabetes or hypertension or hypercholesteremia now please remember that the cardiologists and physicians are going to read this this type of literature they don't read your psychiatric journals and psychiatrists don't read usually the medical journals and then that they are going to argue with you and they show you this evidence i say that this is the latest information what is what do you think i don't want to use your antidepressants so another study which shows that only read the underlying world systematic research systematic review and meta analysis in 2020 shows that unclear whether ssra's reduce mortality or cardiac events in patients with coronary artery disease and depression unclear and the same paper it shows that please read the bold thing bold lettering there given that the quality of the evidence was low further research is warranted but who is going to do this research it is for the younger generation to carry on read all these articles and then trying to at least this paper appears to be little more on the wall so suppose we take the same thing and try to formulate research question how that can be so we are going to ask several questions like how frequent are mi's in myocardial infarction in depression how frequent is mortality in depression if antidepressants control depression are the mi's and mortality less is it less is severity of depre depression associated with mi or mortality is it a gender effect age effect what has compliance of ad got to do with the prevention of cardiac event like that you can have several questions so these are the different variables which you will you will generate and try to control some of these variables in the risk this is how the research question evolves so we need to look at something like a research question like this do antidepressants prevent heart attacks in depression so we are talking about antidepressant regular use compliance which ads 
dosage and frequency how important is it in controlling depression do antidepressants exacerbate depression in people with cads so this leads to formulating a research question which can be exploratory that is open ended or it can be confirmatory confirmatory is hypothesis test you form a hypothesis and then you try to prove or disprove your hypothesis it can be a question driven rather than a method driven that means suppose you know a particular method the research method you should not try to impose that research method onto a question but rather it should be question should be addressed and then search for a proper research method so planning good research is making the procedures fit the questions rather than one way around so if there are already existing procedures a lot of procedures for example there can be only a qualitative study a single uh, a person may have a particular peculiar problem and then you can follow up that single case studies so this has different it need not be only a quantitative research methodology so what can be the components of a good question objective setting it should the question should address all these things study design study subjects intervention or exposure comparison and outcome so let me see let us take this uh, the previous three four papers on uh, antidepressants and let's see how i can form an objective so i wish to study the objective is i wish to study cardiac patients with depression who are taking antidepressants regularly and whether it can, it has any effect on the cardiac events like all cause mortality what could be a setting a cardiology outpatient for example in our hospital like any other hospital how about psychiatric evaluation and management how will you do that when timing then study design proposed it can be a case control is it possible or do you want to do a cohort study or do you want to do only a cross section study what is feasible and who are these study subjects outpatient age gender cad patients etc now intervention or exposure so in what type of study intervention is possible do you need to do a double blind placebo control trial and which ad to use and duration how long one year more outcome myocardial infarction and mortality all are all cause mortality so you can see that i have addressed most of these objective setting study design study subjects intervention or exposure duration and outcome that means i am clear in my aims and objectives so important issues in formalizing a study is is the issue relevant to mental health for us at least is it common or done by many if it is done by many then is there any something new from this or not otherwise it is what is called as reinventing a wheel there is no need to do that then are adequate resources available type of the patient area sample library lab and tools it was very difficult to get literature before the internet use and the world wide web definitely all of us all the seniors definitely know that many of the medical colleges are poorly equipped except maybe some national institutes but uh, most of the medical colleges have poor library resources and so that you won't have any uh, resources uh, literature to read and what will the time frame be sufficient this is also very important ethical and uh, you know other aspects are important another important aspect is is it feasible like whenever you know the, there's a problem whenever the students immediately get into a an md psychiatry that within 6 months they should be able to submit their protocol but now provided they read that they have a particular uh, you know uh, literature survey so the guide can give them a particular area or a topic but then it is for them to search and come up with a particular uh, you know uh, some ideas which can be again formalized so for example somebody takes up like 
is it feasible to do something like does schizotypal disorder lead to schizophrenia is probably possible but for an md student he will not now have any time because he has to sift through lot of uh, you know patients and find out who is having this schizotypal disorder and also the diagnostic uh, categories are shifting from personality disorder to the main categories uh, in uh, schiz- psychotic disorders and schizophrenia then prevalence of <clears throat> for example depression in hyderabad it's too large you cannot do that fmri studies in schizophrenia no technical support efficacy of ssris in elective mutism there are some case report but how many case of elective mutism this is just a give and like a few examples to see that the it should be more feasible study and ethical aspects are also important i'll not go into much into that so coming on to the research questions and research hypothesis questions are framed such that both the planned intervention and the population to which it is being applied are mentioned so in this question we need to mention both this the intervention planned intervention and the population let us see an example here do students who are sleep deprived perform better or worse on test of attention this is a simple thing so you have a test of attention and then the people who are sleep deprived are they performing better or worse so let us form a research hypothesis from this question this is a question what is the hypothesis hypothesis is a research hypothesis is a tentative statement tentative statement about the relationship between two or more variables it is specific it is testable prediction about what you expect to happen in a study you don't know what is the outcome definitely not but it should be testable it can the prediction should be this way or that way so the research question can be made into a research hypothesis like example here taking the same thing about the sleep deprivation this study is designed to assess the hypothesis that sleep deprived people will perform worse on a test than individuals who are not sleep deprived now here i am trying to find out the relationship between two or more variables and i am trying to compare between two groups and then there is a test on which i can do that on attention test so what makes a good hypothesis starting from number 1 you should have some solid question you should do some background research and see that whether it is testable or not and then you form an independent research question on that so this is something like the life of pi easy to remember that's why i put this particular slide of life of pi life of pi cot caught caught with the tiger there so pi caught is easy to remember this uh, why because p is population i is intervention or exposure comparison o is outcome and t is time so if your question your title has all these pi caught components that means it is a full title so i am taking a totally different uh, uh, type of a, a clinical question from um, orthopedic why because it is easy you can split all that and see and also to shift have a uh, shifting of attention so what is the title here the title here is in an adult patient with a sprained ankle is splinting equivalent to plaster in respect to pain control and fracture healing one year study so let us look at this pi caught things in this population what is the population here adult patients self presenting to the emergency department what is the intervention splinting what is the control plaster what is the comparison two groups are there splinting and plaster outcome measures pain control and fracture healing what is the time frame one year study so all the pi caught components are there in this so whenever the researchers are forming it, it is the uh, people who are going to write their protocols and all that should be able to have this pi caught components some of them may be missing definitely if suppose you are not doing a uh, comparative uh, you know uh, observation then these two things will miss so 
If you are following a cohort, then you are doing nothing there. Intervention aspect is not there. But definitely outcome measure should be there and population should be there in any particular study and time frame should also be there. So let us come back to that antidepressant thing. Antidepressant drug compliance reduced the risk of myocardial infarction and mortality in depressive patients. So let us, you can form your own hypothesis on this. Is it feasible? Is it interesting, novel, ethical, and relevant? Acronym is FINER, F-I-N-E-R, and PICOT. All these components should be there. So let us reframe the question based upon this. So how I'm going to reframe the question is one year follow-up study to evaluate occurrence of cardiac events in depressed CAD patients who are compliant on sertraline in a cardiology, in cardiology outpatients. So do you want to compare? You can add another compare sertraline with some other antidepressant. So you can reframe the whole question. So this is how the question can evolve. And then you can add the methodology you want to do a cohort or case control or cross-sectional study. So questions are basically and objectives can also be primary and secondary. What is primary is the most important or the central question. Ideal and it is stated in advance and that is the basis for your sample size calculation. So whenever the researchers do the sample calculation that is based upon the primary objective. Secondary are related. For example, you are assessing the efficacy, then that becomes the primary one, but you also uh, at the same time looking at the side effect of a particular drug, then that becomes a secondary and it can be vice versa also. So it is related to primary, it is also stated in advance and limited number, but usually more than one. So common error in research person is overloading with too many objectives and too much data collection. So if you are very clear in your primary, it should generally be one and secondary one or two, that's okay. So single primary question around which to focus the development of the protocol and sample size estimates. And secondary research question can be related to the primary question or other hypothesis, different types of questions can arrive. For example, you have a question on etiology, then it is a case control or a cohort type of study. The diagnosis, signs, symptoms, or tests for a diagnosing a disorder, then it's a diagnostic evaluation study. Prognosis, inception, cohort study, therapy, randomized control, trial, cost effectiveness, economic evaluation, and quality of life studies. So depending upon what is that you're looking, you try to also know about the type of these types of evidences which you are looking for. We are finished with the CVS. Now let us see antidepressants and diabetes mellitus. Now recently you can find that when you look at these, uh, you know, the literature, you don't find any supporting literature for any of your antidepressants and also for uh, the uh, antipsychotic drugs in some of the papers. It's really surprising. Now let us see this particular study the risk of new onset diabetes in antidepressant users, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Now what it says, the conclusion, it says still it remains a matter of debate whether single AD exerts a different effect on the risk of diabetes. Another study, increased risk of type two diabetes in antidepressant users, evidence from a six year longitudinal study in a cohort. This is published in Diabetic Medicine and your medical colleagues and diabetologists are going to read and they are going to throw this evidence on your face and say that your antidepressants have increased my patient's diabetes. So the conclusion says the prospective study found that current antidepressant users were at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes following during follow-up than non-users regardless of the type of antidepressant, even after adjusting for the symptoms of severe depression. This is something like, you know, a heart attack for all of us. But then you need to counter them 
We are doing a proper study and then evaluating their paper. Another study which shows that uh, the meta-analysis confirms conclusion, meta-analysis confirms that association between AD use and incident diabetes. Another study, 2020, you can see here, <clears throat> is a population-based nested case control study. And the conclusion says that regular metabolic evaluations are recommended for patients with depression regularly taking antidepressants. Another study, again published in 2020, conclusion, which again, please read the underlined one. Treatment may be at a small increased risk of developing type 2D. So these are at least somewhat uh, comforting, published in JAMA Psychiatry. But then your JAMA Psychiatry, the physicians are not going to read it. You have to show them the evidence and say that there is a small increased risk of developing T2D. But then all it requires is a proper evaluation of the paper. Now, that is about antidepressants. Second generation antidepressant, either it is a paper, it shows that it is published in our World Psychiatry <coughs> Journal. Conclusion, a significantly increased risk for stroke and coronary artery disease in non-elderly adult, non-elderly adult, sample with second generation use, anti-psychotic use. We also confirm a significant risk of adverse metabolic outcomes, which all of us know already. These findings raise concerns about the long-term safety of SGAs, given their widespread and chronic use. Now, let us see what are the recent, now you see that there's a lot of, uh, these days, a lot of social media, which is very active. And then somebody who at least reads some of these papers, which is very unlikely. But the people can you know, pass on all this information to this uh, social media. And then this is what happens regarding our antidepressants or anti-psychotic drugs. Let us see some of what are these earthquake components here. Here is a media projection from the Economic Times, published in April 2022. It says that antidepressants are not linked with happiness or improved quality of life. Read the quotes. The quote here is the link. You can go and read that. What it says is that using antidepressant regularly may not make you happier compared to people with depression who do not take the drugs, finds a study. It is a little confusing. Even if you read two times also, it is not that easy to understand what they are trying to do because they themselves were confused as to what these findings were. But then you see the title, not linked with the happiness. That means shows that antidepressants don't improve, the, they do not alleviate the depression. The same paper in another media, foreign media, shows the study finds antidepressants don't improve the quality of life long term. 23rd April 2022. Why that social media projection has come? People are going to read the social media, but actually because of this particular paper, published in April 2022, the title of the article is Antidepressants and Health-Related Quality of Life, HRQOL, for Patients with Depression. Analysis of Medical Expenditure Panel Survey for United States. Okay, now, what it says is, and the paper, what is it trying to conclude is that, that people who are given antidepressants do not have a good quality of health related quality of life. And what is the, and the population? 17.47 million adult patients diagnosed with depression. So that's why that earthquake slide I have shown is definitely going to upset a lot of us unless you actually read this paper. The link is given, you can download it. Plus One Journal is actually, you know, easily readable and downloadable. Uh, so it's open for all. Every year with two years they have done, they have not actually done any 
they have not gone through all these 17.47 million adults it's very difficult humanly possible for you know uh, in the us these people where if you actually analyze this particular paper find the primary author is a pharmacist of course pharmacy is not nothing against pharmacists publishing any uh, articles and please remember when an article is published like plus one and all that that means they already peer review so you cannot comment and say that the author is a pharmacist and a water right he has got what does he know about psychiatry but it has been peer reviewed and published in one of the uh, international journals so what he has done is that from 2005 to 2016 about 12 years they have taken the secondary data of the health related quality of life us data 12 years of data and then seen that in two years follow up that is a two years follow up that is also again the data which is provided by the united states uh, you know site so it is a secondary data analysis it is not a primary data analysis. secondary data this data is already there on the database and they have analyzed this so what is the outcome measure they have used health related quality of things for two years they have been followed and then they found that there is antidepressants are not doing anything to these patients but the social media you have seen the projection of this so you see that there is a lot of problem when you start reading only the summary of this paper you should definitely read the entire paper you will find that lot of loopholes are there in this paper basically as i have said it is a secondary analysis there nothing wrong in doing a secondary analysis but the problem is the most important crux point here is that how did they look for depression in health related quality of life measure what is the measure did they use any you no know, uh, depression uh, instrument they have not they have not used any hdrs or bdi or anything like that us has got this they have an instrument which is called as the social functioning 12 ss12 what they call it and this ss12 is something which measures this health related quality of life so ss12 is it's got 12 questions five questions address the physical health and five questions what they say is emotional problems emotional problems there is only one question you say that do you feel down in dumps or blue that is the only question any time suppose somebody asks me any time do you feel down and you will say most of us will say probably yes it doesn't mean any time frame okay now what is happening here is that there are no questions on depression apart from saying emotional problems so the author has concluded that emotional problems is equal to the problems which are related to depression so that is the main problem in without using any depression instrument assessment instrument the authors have concluded that antidepressants do not do anything with the depression so that is how the analysis of this paper goes on but then unless we go through the paper we cannot there is already a critique which is uh, on this paper has been published in journal of clinical psychiatry it says that a readers guide and it was in drugs and health related qol a readers guide on how to examine a viral research paper with a critical eye please read both this paper this paper is also little difficult to get journal of clinical psychiatry now you will read only the summary so this is how this paper appears to be misleading that's not all there is after shock after a earthquake what is that economic times this even in our whatsapp group some of these people have uh, come across uh, this particular paper they have projected it so economic times says that keep the antidepressants away new brain study uh, new study says that chemical imbalance in brain isn't causing depression july 2022 this is the conversation you click on this link you can listen to the audio by the author 
This is by author Joanna Moncrief. The serotonin theory of depression, a systematic umbrella review of the evidence. Published in Molecular Psychiatry. You can't say that Joanna Moncrief has fudged with the data and or her results were wrong or personally you know, she is uh, she misleads or enters into a controversy why you cannot contradict like that because this is published in a reputed journal molecular psychiatry a peer reviewed journal so those aspects you cannot fight an author like that but i would request because these uh, people who are interested probably because somebody is going to ask you especially if you are in the clinic and you will find an nri guy you know, with a um, uh, half pant cargos standing before you with an ipad and then he says that your antidepressants are not going to act what is that you are doing uh, prescribe some other drugs or do only psychotherapy so you will be caught in such a situation and uh, luckily the indian media has not yet got a whiff of all these things now this paper is not that easy to dissect let us see the conclusions of this paper the study findings are demolishes the phht hypothesis of depression there is no consistent what the uh, findings are no consistent evidence of association between serotonin and depression no support for hypothesis that depression is caused by lowered serotonin activity or concentrations there is some evidence was consistent with the possibility that long term antidepressant use actually reduces serotonin concentration this is contrary to what we have learned over several decades that how phht is deficient in depression and then this is one paper which comes out it says that phht is not involved in depression at all and your antidepressants are actually going to decrease the serotonin concentration so that's why that after quick after that particular paper the latest after quick in july this paper is not that easy to condemn let us see why but then there are some problems in this paper i would urge the researchers to kindly go through read the whole paper this again you can download it and read <clears throat> now let us see first thing what is this umbrella review of evidence in the hierarchy of the evidence based medicine you will find lot of systematic reviews are already published because systematic reviews again look at one particular aspect not the entire aspect our meta analysis they look at one particular aspect so umbrella review is review over systematic reviews so let us say for example some seven or eight systematic reviews have been published and about five or six meta analysis have been published you are going to do a review a super review of all these systematic reviews and meta analysis which is called now as the umbrella review okay this appeared to be quite new to me before reading this uh, particular uh, paper but then is it important why is it important because he is saying that as you have i have read the results that phst is not at all involved in this this i would actually leave as a question but then i don't want to keep you you know under uh, stress leaving with a particular question like this just to indicate few things it is difficult to find holes in this particular paper because they have what they have done is that they have assessed the 5ht involvement in depression like they have taken older studies like uh, uh, tryptophan depletion studies which were older older in the sense uh, after 2007 you don't have any studies on uh, tryptophan depletion published studies then they also looked at the uh, serotonin levels 5ht1a binding 
from the imaging studies and also from the postmortem studies. They have looked at the CERT transporter proteins. And they have also looked at the genetic studies on CERT. So altogether, there are some 19 such systematic reviews and meta-analysis. There are at least two or three, I think, of uh, the genetic study. Only two studies are there. OK. So this particular umbrella review, what they have done is that there are two SSRs are there who are, again, uh, quite well versed in this particular uh, field. They independently assess each of these systematic review and meta-analysis. And then they grade them. They grade them whether the evidence is high or medium or low. So unless you read this paper, you will not get the crux of it. The crux of it lies in the results. So what does the results say? The results say that 50% of the papers are having low evidence. And only 31% of the papers have reported the heterogeneity, heterogeneous things in the different types of papers which are published in the meta-analysis or meta-analysis or systematic review and meta-analysis. That's all the papers are also there. That is the crux. What is the crux is that why, you please read the paper, you will find out. Now, what it means is that, that but their conclusions were drawn from the 19 papers or reduced to 17 papers. So let us take 17 papers. So if 50% of the papers are of low quality, but still you are making conclusions of 17 papers, that means you should be actually making your conclusion based upon only eight or nine papers, but then you are making your conclusion based upon 17 papers. Actually, it should be reduced to one third should be five or six papers because only 31% of the papers have reported heterogeneity. But your conclusions were based upon 17 papers. It is like this simple. Let us say, for example, in an examination, there is a particular question, and then 50% of the students are below, uh, that is, below average, and there are some who are above the average. You are combining both of them of low quality and better quality and then drawing conclusions. Just this is to alleviate your, alleviate your uh, tension about this particular paper. I leave it to you to actually, <coughs> sorry, make your assessment of this paper. These are the things which are coming up. This is a storm against our Hypothesis, known hypothesis, and also about our medications, which are of regular use. Now, these are some of the things which are in the literature, published, very recent. But the young researchers have to focus on all these things because you are going to face the music from the other fields and also from patients. So thank you all for patient listening. To summarize this, I have uh, focused upon the various aspects of how to evolve a research question, the stories around them, and then how to you know, uh, formulate a research question and hypothesis, objectives, title, and then some of the studies which are surprising. Thank you so much. Uh, Sai. Thank you, Anand, sir. That was an excellent presentation, sir. Sir, right now there are no questions posted, sir. I request chairpersons to give their comments first before uh, any audience post some questions. For comments, I'm requesting Uma Shankar. Invite the questions from the audience, number one. Number two, put your comments. I think I will put some comments at, uh, yes. in the last stage. Sir, yes, sir. I will Anand sir to stop sharing the screen. Okay, okay.
thank you sir very good excellent presentation of vast presentation sir i think it is uh, helped a lot of uh, students how to proceed for uh, any research uh, today i think i saw one letter from the nmc also there is how important of research for the post graduates who complete the post graduation minimum things are required so that is maybe the reason for this organizers they asked for this presentation definitely it is more useful as well as here some of the hiccups how to do the research what are the um, problems we will face and also when you are presenting the uh, data also how to present it and uh, uh, this uh, these are very important things i think this with this presentation i think more most of the people have benefited and uh, i request the audience whatever the most of the maybe join uh, post graduates are maybe there they can post the questions in the chat box sir will be answering or they can ask also okay otherwise they can ask also but i think here they cannot ask and things they can post their questions sir in chat yeah two questions two things are there i don't know what is them sir there is an anonymous question what if my research question is already being studied in a different area so what if means i don't understand that will be pertaining to that particular area area in the sense that you mean the geographical area or some other uh, you know field of uh, study so if it is different geog geographical area we need to take the things uh, into consideration in that particular geographical area and then whether this is generalizable or not if that is a geographical area the summer field of study like you are doing something on uh, in the medical uh, field or something like that then uh, one needs to think whether all the variables are controlled or not thank you sir i request post graduates and faculty members who are there to post questions i am dr chandrakar can i ask a question sir namaste please please no uh, dr anand it was an excellent presentation i enjoyed it thoroughly my question is see often especially in the field of psychiatry we tend to get uh, some questions when we constantly interact with the patients very often which can be converted into a sort of a research question but uh, what we generally see is uh, asking the postgraduate students to formulate their research topics in the first 6 months of training which i think is essentially not a correct practice in the sense that the interaction of their patients and the questions which occur to their mind is still at a very nascent stage at that level so unless you allow them to really interact with the patient population and go through the at least for an year or so probably the questions cannot be crystallized in their minds what is your opinion about it i entirely agree with that but the nmc regulation says uh, after their admission within 6 months they should submit their research protocol and definitely it is the guides only who have to prepare the whole thing only thing is that they are asked to search the literature on this particular topic and <coughs> sorry <coughs> come with particular uh, questions and but the whole thing is designed by us only which has been which i have been doing it unfortunately or fortunately fortunately because i was able to learn myself about uh, how to formulate the you know different types of designs and all that but that is the problem which is genuine which remains and uh, you know i don't think there is a solution for that because nmc says that within so they have to finish everything within 2 uh, years uh, of the and then submit it 6 months before the examinations it may be problem for the only psychiatry faculty and sir most probably for other things already they have uh, understanding in under graduation i think they may not have that much problem only psychiatry because they may not attend during the under graduation so the little time is required for understanding that may be the reason difficult otherwise other faculty i think already they have exposed in the even undergraduation and uh, house surgeons everywhere that may not be a problem for them and also things are more measurable in medicine and all such things they wear you know surgery and medicine things are more measurable yes sir some blood level of something and then like that 
sir there is one question from dr nitin kondapuram can you share some light on qualitative research question and quantitative research question yeah qualitative research questions are uh, not as uh, formalized like the quantitative uh, research question meaning that the testability and uh, the validity of uh, particular such instruments are not there but then various methods are there to get the information like focused uh, research groups and uh, other types of areas are there and uh, the information collected for example let me go into this particular hdrs scale which is used initially they have collected the uh, you know uh, they have asked the patients about wh- what do they feel like about uh, how they are feeling and they have collected all that information from different patients and then they have formed the different themes so that was a qualitative study initially but then it has been more structured later on and then it evolved into the hamilton depression rating scale this is what my reading about the hamilton depression rating scale is about so qualitative research definitely is required because you cannot be stuck up with only some instruments which are available and you keep doing it in your local area and then standardize them and then use it but then you need to develop uh, newer instruments and the initial step would definitely be the qualitative research so i think it should be a continuity rather than uh, should not be viewed only as a different type of uh, research and then give low uh, you know um, lower marks to qualitative which i don't think many of the psychiatrists would do any qualitative research you find definitely in the psychologists and sociologists uh, doing a lot of qualitative research but psychiatry it is still very less but i think it's a continuity one more question here sir sir thanks to you for the session my question is that practically what to do if patient or our colleague from different branch come up with papers contradictory to what we have been practicing the like antidepressant therapy and depression practically how to handle such situation currently i don't know whether it is a md student or md student research design is more important outcomes are less important for other researchers definitely outcomes are more important so if you are only an md student and all that your research design is more important it should not be the same title should not be there in the uh, in the university for the last 3 uh, years or so so you need to actually submit uh, you know with your signature that in the last 3 years the same title has not recurred this is the latest nmc if it is not uh, md student where you are not that much interested in the outcomes because sometimes definitely it is the limitation of the sample sizes and all that that you are you may not find some things which are significant you are not definitely aiming uh, you are definitely aiming for significant but then you may not find it also but the research design itself how it is executed methodology is more important there but if it definitely a genuine research which you want to publish and all that these things are very important you need to go through these papers which i have for example the some of these things which i have told you uh, which i have projected and then you need to sift through the whole literature and then form your own perspective and design a study it could be contradictory to whatever is present presently available sir one more anonymous question sir sir for cross sectional studies online how do we choose study population Uh, especially these days when everyone and anyone is sending google forms yeah the problem will be there the genuinity is about i get a let us say i get uh, a questions with 100 questions and that's in the google form uh, then i may not be that much interested to answer all the 100 questions is it not so a researcher is more interested than the person who is a participant so one has to think of all these things where you want to do only in google forms only in google forms i don't think is advisable one definitely has to go and uh, appear before the subjects and then see how to limit your questions and all that it should not be boring it should not be repeating for the participants because participants interest is the most important and i don't know how much genuine uh, the person is answering on the online so that problem is always there any questions are completed sir
sir there is one more question by dr sri lakshmi madam in your experience how feasible is it to do a qualitative research as a pg thesis i have not done much of qualitative research but probably it should also be planned it can be done is it not with the, the research methodology training and all that and uh, these days uh, only thing is the evaluation of the uh, the information uh, requires a more systematic uh, way one need to extract the themes out of that particular you know narrative which the patients uh, or the relatives or the subjects participants they give and there are some uh, software also available but one should learn this new software and then uh, again these softwares are not free some of them are when uh, one need to see how we can extract themes out of it the evaluation analysis is more difficult in the qualitative studies keeping that in mind definitely i think we should do also qualitative so something new will come there is one more question by dr vanapalli varaprasad good evening sir please clarify regarding the utility of formats for rq other than picards thank you once again for the clarification of the study and ads with much controversy raised in social media no, i am not able to get the question what are the acronyms uh, varaprasad kindly what is what is the acronyms he has said Sir, Picards already had explained. Sir, okay. RQ, I really didn't know. So maybe it may be a research question, sir. Please clarify okay. regarding the utility of formats for research question. Well, exactly. What is the question? I am not able to get it. Yeah. Can you read that again? If you're sorry for that. Good evening, sir. Please clarify regarding the utility of formats for RQ other than Picards. thank you once again for the clarification on the study on ads with much controversy raised in social media okay thank you varaprasad uh, i think uh, picot is the one which is most commonly used if suppose you are planning for a qualitative uh, study then uh, these things are not that important is it not because you are just looking at the raw information you are trying to get uh, from the participants so there i don't think that picot really applies so that is one instance where i can think that picot may not apply thank you sir now i request dr kishan sir to give his comments uh the wonderful talk and um, and the interaction also but people most of them participants i'm observing are uh, junior uh, uh, young doctors and psychiatrists as well as um, researchers like uh, pani prashant sri lakshmi and shekar sir and raj shekar already past editors and uh, chori sir there and uh, like mayurnath and uh, professor samina has all these things so various uh, coming to the comment i want to start with the permission of uh, sai krishna as well as uh, president uh, uh, jaj reddy I, i want to share my this point with the uh, all senior colleagues also i read book one book by written by gopichand who is a kashmiri pandit and uh, published by cambridge press which was translated to telugu from east godavari vanatha the name of the book is world crisis that is translated in telugu vishwa sankshobham so whole book was thoroughly narrated the suffering of what is happening in the world the problems in journalism problems in different professions organizations ruling sections and uh, types of ruling democratic communistic then the polarization in the world religious so many things he analyze everything so what is this problems what is the end for the problem he concluded this problem is not in the world it is in the human mind whatever the problems in human mind is reflecting the outside world so the the ultimate solution has to given by the scientist of the mind will settle the issue that is the conclusion of the book 
I don't know who is the scientist of the mind. I think uh, uh, I think senior people has to question whether the psychiatrists are, as I have seen, a lot of neurologists have done research in the science of mind. So, come to uh, uh, there is the necessity of a lot of research, not only in illness and wellness, because normal population also. So, how they excel in the life uh, with the uh, available neuro, whatever the hardware we have, and uh, how to improve. And uh, and uh, here the among the participants, the senior colleagues, and uh, so the way I developed a area of you know some person should every researcher first answer to the first you should have an interest and something there in your mind of searching nature and should have an overview of psychiatry, uh, all maybe a psychology track, maybe normal psychology and psycho different schools of personality theories and psychotherapies. Then if you are unhappy with the existing psychotherapies, you will get something innovative things. I mean, neurology also same, neurobiology and psychiatry like that. So a lot of uh, there are private practitioners, there are academicians, as well as after earning money, private practitioners, what to do? What is your... So many persons are telling a social responsibility. A lot of corporates are telling social responsibility. What is our social uh, responsibility? I think it is what is academic responsibility or we, we are practicing an existing science. So what is your giving back to the existing science of psychiatry, uh, maybe in illness or wellness? So a person should have overview of the subject, or uh, grip over the subject, and he should develop an area of interest. I developed my area of interest somewhere by attending workshops in the uh, APA, maybe in uh, complementary alternative medicine, yoga, and spirituality in U.S., slowly reviewing, attending the same lectures, uh, recording the sessions, listening, re-listening, listening, listening, then you will develop a grip over one part of area. So every psychiatrist, I think, youngsters should carry uh, whatever the answer says. You, you try to develop an area of interest and develop, uh, I think there are a lot of databases available now in IMH and Asha Hospital, Chetana, and individual doctors in Karimnagar, every doctor is now uh, started collecting the database and the institutions are having their databases to analyze the databases available and uh, developing some area of interest and you develop your own reviewing the things and developing a research question thing into uh, putting into a method, a, a format, uh, and it may be the, a course of illness. You are a, you are taking a maybe in etiology or course of illness, maybe prognosis, maybe then and whatever the different types, maybe a cohort study or maybe a RCT or whatever a randomized control study, different studies. Then after that, at least you have to contribute something to the existing scientists, science, maybe in illness domain, what we are doing day-to-day uh, -day practice and even in wellness also how to prevent the area of uh, that is primary prevention, secondary prevention, tension prevention. If the I think youngsters will, this is a very useful talk to practitioners as well as youngsters to develop a, a, a responsibility, academic and uh, professional responsibility to commit yourself to give back something to the existing science. I think Indian minds are something different we can analyze something, uh, a little abstract things. We are still using going with the Western uh, books, you know, Kaplan, what are the textbooks you now we are reading the, from West. I think Eastern, the, our research uh, is, uh, uh, I think uh, the research community should be developed and inter I think 10%, at least uh, uh, some professionals to take as a research, as a career, and I think with this uh, comments, and uh, I think uh, it's a congr I'm congratulating Telangana State Branch, President and EC, and uh, other all state, uh, Telangana to continue the spirit of this type of lectures. And uh, Anansar is always available to us. Not only Anansar, other senior colleagues, lecturers, Shekhar are there to guide us to, to now we are increasing the members in Telangana. I think uh, we'll continue the mission of series of lectures in research like this. And uh, thank you very much for uh, 
uh, giving opportunity for the TSB for chairing the session of Dr. Anand. Is a wonderful teacher to me, and I got his blessings in various domains of my life. Thank you, sir, uh, for presentation. Thank you, George, and uh, thank you, senior all senior persons and Chen Shaker, sir, and uh, all seniors who continuously listening uh, since the beginning. Over to Sai Krishna and George Reddy. Sai, uh, are there any more questions? Sir, there is uh, there are few more questions, sir. Yeah. Doctor Bollapalli Preeti Swaru, can the senior psychiatrist take up a prospective study rather than retrospective study or meta-analysis? You take up any type of study. Only thing is, why senior psychiatrist? You yourselves can take up, and then uh, it can be collaborative always. Okay. Prospective studies can also be done, but retrospective studies are. Easier whenever the data is available in the case sheets and all that, or the case files, or patient data is available, then it's okay. Whereas retrospective study itself can be quite problematic. Dr. Varapasar had systematic reviews and uh, the other uh, meta analysis. You need uh, uh, better training on that. How to do, probably you can get trained on Cochrane. Uh, site as how to do systematic reviews and meta-analysis. And also for analyzing, you require different type of uh, software for that. Dr. Varaprasad had uh, posted few more acronyms like Eclipse, PIPA, SPICE. Yes, yes, yes. You also put it on my WhatsApp also. And uh, I, I, my concentration of, as basically I've also given a reply to him was basically on the Clinical studies where PICOT or PCOT are almost same because I is intervention, intervention is not there, exposure. For example, in a cohort study, it would be only an exposure, PCOT. Now, let us say, for example, eclipse, that is expectations, client groups, location, impact, profession, and service. That has to do more with the health service related. So, you know, to always be health service, any service. So, that is not actually a clinical type of study which uh, my focus was on today, but such things can also, as it uh, the because the acronyms are being expanded, and P A P O H that is population intervention, profession, outcome, healthcare settings. So probably the management people are more interested in such type of uh, studies, and spice that is setting, perspective, intervention comparison and evaluation. So I think that again, these are different types of studies which are done and uh, most probably for management people, it is applicable. There is a last message, sir, from Dr. Rajshekar, sir. Despite of RCBC South Zone program, sir had attended this program, sir. He had just a congratulatory message. Thank you, Anand, sir. As usual, an excellent talk, especially the critical way you dissected those controversial papers. Regards, Dr. Raj Shekhar. Thank you so much. Yeah. There ends the question and answer session. Over to Dr. George Reddy, sir. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Anand, sir, I think it was an excellent presentation, sir. I think the attendance was uh, excellent, sir. Thank you, sir. And hope we will get in uh, touch with you, sir, for more uh, sessions. And uh, I will request Sai to uh, take up uh, much more, many more topics. And we would uh, expect Anand, sir, to give a uh, talk on statistics also, sir, your favorite uh, subject in the future. And um, I thank all the seniors. Uh, I thank... Uh, uh, for this uh, wonderful evening and uh, uh, I request uh, Dr. Minhas uh, to give uh, propose the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. George. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Anand sir for enlightening us, uh, not only the students, PG students, but also HODs and professors and assistant professors like us, uh, how to do research and how to generate uh, questions and how to go about it. Thank you, Anand, sir, for your excellent presentation and your enlightenment uh, to all of us. I would also like to thank Dr. Uma Shankar, sir, and Dr. Kishan, sir, for chairing the session and gracing the occasion. I would like to thank Dr. Sai Krishna, 
who was not only moderator but also instrumental in uh, bringing up uh, this activity i would like to thank uh, all our ec members uh, especially president dr george reddy sir for uh, starting uh, such a uh, taking such a uh, a thing uh, containing uh, cmes online uh, uh, proposing cmes every month uh, for enlightening uh, psychiatrists as well as uh, our pg students from uh, comfort of their home thank you to, uh, dr george reddy sir uh, i would also like to thank chandrashekar sir and all the seniors who have attended uh, taken out time on this sunday evening and attended the program all the audience uh, all the pg students uh, from not only from telangana but also outside telangana uh, thanks a lot for your attendance this uh, means a lot for us i would like to thank anil martin for giving technical support and uh, last but not least ambitus pharma for sponsoring the event i thank one and all if i have forgotten someone uh, please excuse me thank you i think we can close the session yes thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you thank you anand sir thank you sir. thank you anand sir thank you kishan thank sir umashankar sir joy sir vinay sir and all the seniors sir thank you sir umashankar sir thank you sir